Okay, last page for binomial distributions. Uh, we've talked a lot last lesson about the expected value and the expectation of the number of successes in a binomial distribution is just the same with Bernoulli trials and Bernoulli trials. Uh, and it's pretty easy to calculate. It is n times p. Now, one way to calculate the expected value, just so you remember, is to add up the average or the weighted average of each x times px. You add those up, you get an answer. But there's a shortcut. For a binomial distribution, the shortcut is just to multiply n times p. So, flipping a coin 50 times. If you're flipping a coin 50 times, and that's n, you would expect that you'd get half as many heads, or half as many tails. So, 50 times p, which is a half here, is 25 heads. That makes perfect sense. If I had 100 flips of a coin, I would expect I would get about 50 heads in 100 flips, half as many. Okay, let's see how we can use that in example 4 and example 5. In example 4, it says there are 10 multiple choice questions on a test with 5 possible answers to each question. What is the probability of getting <clears throat> 6 out of 10 correct? Now, we have to assume that getting means guessing. We don't have any prior knowledge here. We're guessing 6 out of 10 correct. We're closing our eyes and saying, all right, I think it's B or I think it's D. And they just guess completely for each question. All right, let's set this up. P, Q, N, and X. What is the probability of success? Well, think about success here as guessing the question correctly. If there are five possible answers to each question, then you have a one in five chance of guessing each question correctly. That also means that you have a four in five chance of failing, of not guessing it correctly. N here is the number of trials. Well, there's 10 multiple choice questions to guess, so N must be 10. And we have to guess six out of 10 correct, so X must be six. Six correct guesses. Okay, we're asked to find the probability. So let's find the probability that X is equal to six. This, by the way, is just one of the rows from the distribution table for 10 multiple choice questions. I'm not gonna do the whole table. I just need one answer from that table. So X equals six. That is 10 choose six times P, one and five raised to the, well, if this is the probability of success, how many times did I must I have gotten that correct? I must have guessed correctly six times. I guessed incorrectly, that's a four and five chance, four of those times. Six plus four adds up to 10. I guessed correctly six questions, incorrectly four questions. And let's think about what that is gonna give us. While I'm calculating this, and while you're calculating it, think about whether that's gonna give you a big answer or a small answer. What do you think this answer is gonna end up being? Larger or smaller than 50%, let's say. And I get 0 0.0055 or 0.55% chance of that happening. So a very small chance of that happening. And that makes sense. If you're guessing questions correctly and you only have a 20% chance of guessing each question correctly, what hope do you have of guessing six out of 10 correct? You might guess one correct, you might guess two correct. In fact, let's figure out what the expected number of correct answers guessed would be. So the EX here is N times P, which is 10 times one in five, or two. 
you would expect to guess two correct guesses out of 10 on average. That's the expected number of guesses you would expect to see someone guess on average. Okay? And example number five. A game consists of cutting a deck. Cutting a deck means you show the card, you put it back. We're cutting a deck five times in a row. For each face card, you win $2. Every time you cut a face card, ooh, you pay, get paid $2. That's great. But unfortunately, it costs $5 to play. Right off the bat, does this look like a fair game to you or not? What do you think? Answer yes or no and have a good answer in your in your head before we move on. Okay, so we know that success here is drawing a face card. If you draw a face card, you win $2. If you draw any other card, you don't win anything. So, n equals 5. These are Bernoulli trials because you either did cut a face card or you didn't. Success, failure. What is the probability of cutting a face card on each draw? Well, p, probability of face card, there are 12 face cards in the deck, and we assume there are 52 cards in the deck, so you've got a 12 and 52 chance of doing that. Well, what we should probably find out here is not the probability. We want to know whether this is a fair game or prove whether it's a fair game or not. So in order to prove that, we want to find the expected values. Here is the expected number of face cards in each game that we play. If we have a 12 and 52 chance of getting a face card and there are five cuts we're allowed to do, five times 12 and 52 is equal to 1.15 face cards cut per game on average. Well, that's great, but we're making $2 every time we do this. So expected winnings then, based on what I just figured out, is $2 for every 1.15 face cards. That times 2 is equal to $2, approximately $2.31 rounded. Well, if as a player, now that I've calculated this, as a player, if I'm making $2.31 every time I cut the deck five times, and I'm paying $5 to play, well then this is definitely not a fair game. Whose favor is this game in? The players or the dealers? And if you said the dealers, you're absolutely right. So, the expected profit now, not winnings, but profit per game, is how much I win per game minus how much I pay per game. And 231 minus 5 means I'm losing $2.69 every time I play this game. Definitely not a fair game. Okay, that ends this lesson. Um, good luck with your homework practice. I'll post it on the classroom and look for my next lesson, 6.3, coming up soon. Thanks, guys. Take care.